Tied me up, Mike. They're still on time. You guys are still I know, on time. I said I'm like, oh my god, I'm so used to these things not starting on time. Hey, take your time, don't worry. Thank you. Let's see. Hey, Jason, I might need you to do this. Tell me when you're ready, Jason. Take your time. I want to thank everyone for being here today. Late Friday, the county executive issued a executive order that impacted the Erie County Clerk's Office. And the reason why he issued that executive order was a substantial or high transmission area. Erie County has become uh, a substantial or high transmission area according to the CDC. We did not know about that and as of Saturday and into Sunday uh, we found out about that executive order after reading that online there really wasn't any communication with an office that generated nearly five million dollars of a surplus for Erie County. Erie County normally has uh, a large surplus, but this year 100% of the surplus came from the county clerk's office. With that, uh, I'm here uh, to announce that the county executive uh, has implemented this executive order and how will this impact our uh, customers as they were coming in. When we received that on Friday, uh, we were not given any indication of what to do with customers. And uh, based on this executive order and based on reviewing it and based on the county executive's overreach, the county clerk's office employees and visitors will be required to have a face covering. Today, I sent a letter which you have to the county executive Mark Polencars in regard to my opposition to his half measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and the surgent Delta variant. Let me be crystal clear. I am not averse to facial coverings where the science-based evidence indicates it's an effective strategy at reducing the spread of COVID-19 and its variants. However, I am opposed to the half measures which do not fully address the data. The county executive's new implemented mass mandate falls short of its intended purpose, protecting the public from COVID-19 by only applying his policies 
to the walls of county-owned or operated facilities. There are significant sources of spread which are known and ignored. I repeat, they're being ignored. I am not aware of any scientific evidence which demonstrates that COVID-19 may only be spread within the walls of public buildings owned or operated by the County of Erie. I have asked the Poland Cards Administration in the past for this data, and they acknowledged the request, but they still have not provided me it. I do not believe it exists. I believe the taxpayers of Erie County are entitled to a consistent county-wide policy which effectively mitigates the spread of COVID-19 and any of its variants. I ask that the county executive share any critical information as I believe that the taxpayers are entitled to a consistent wide county-wide policy which effectively presents the spread of COVID-19. So we had a policy and that policy has always been that if you're vaccinated, uh, you do not need a face mask in the county clerk's office. Uh, with that executive order that the county executive has done, that will change. Even vaccinated uh, customers to the DMV and to all of our Erie County Clerk facilities will need a face mask. That presents uh, a problem for us. We are the business office of Erie County. We do nearly over a million transactions. Uh, each year, providing a substantial uh, uh, surplus for the county. And in addition to that, uh, we are, as the business office, a front-facing office. So without any uh, communication to my office, he's implemented this policy. And in addition to that, the people up there on the 16th floor, uh, once again, and the point I'm trying to make is, that COVID-19 does not stop at the clerk's office. It doesn't just stop there, it's in all buildings. So what I'm asking for is a consistent policy, one way or the other. Standardize the policy, because people are sick and tired of government not being consistent. Uh, we're all tired of wearing a mask. And now, many of the people who were vaccinated are going to be required to wear a mask. And I will leave you with this and I will answer questions. I have a correspondence from the uh, county executive's uh, officials, his staff stating that if you come in to a county owned facility like the DMV and you are not compliant to his executive order, you will face a class B misdemeanor. Class B misdemeanor, which is a criminal offense. So once again, uh, I have drafted this letter and I am asking the county executive for the data. Uh, I'm asking him for the science on why he's doing what he's doing. Uh, and it's going to impact our office significantly. As I said, uh, last week we did nearly 4,000 transactions at all of our facilities, uh, all of our auto bureau facilities, not including with the clerk's office across the street. So. Uh, we want to make sure that this is loud and clear, that this is a Mark Polonkar's policy, that he does have control over these facilities as county executive. I don't agree with it, uh, but we will be uh, uh, definitely following the mandate uh, by the county executive. So with that, be happy to answer any questions. So my question, just so I understand you clearly, you saying that you want the mask mandate across all the county, or do you just want the entire policy to be consistent one way or another? We want the policy to be consistent one way or the other, Michael, because here's the thing. It's it's sort of, if we're following the science and the data, uh, I can go to Wegmans or Tops and not wear a mask. We're outside here. We're all, you know, congregating here today. You do not need a mask. But if you go into a county clerk facility, you're going to need a mask. Matter of fact, you're going to need a mask under the penalty of possible arrest, a criminal class B misdemeanor. That's a significant threat to our customers. We run our office like a business and we are in competition with the state of New York. We're an agent of the state and the state wants people to go online. 
Well, we want people to renew local. We want them to renew their license local. And uh, we are doing our best effort to generate revenue for Erie County. But we need a policy that's consistent and standard. And I think that's why people have been frustrated. And we're looking for the data on why he is doing this policy, why he is mandating this. Look at, we have complied throughout the whole uh, uh, COVID-19, we have complied to keep our employees safe. I wear a mask, we all wear a mask, uh, I'm vaccinated. I have no problem with that. The problem I have is uh, Saturday, uh, we have people coming into the facility that are vaccinated and they're not happy about having to wear a mask. And uh, I'm calling on the county executive why you are doing what you're doing for only county run facilities and not even addressing what happens out at 15,000 people you, you said were at the Bills on Saturday for a Bills practice that was a county-owned facility. Why don't they have masks out at the county-owned facility? I don't see anything on the Bills website dealing with uh, uh, vaccinations or that, that you have to have tickets, right? So where is, where is the consistency, where is the standardization? I don't see it. I'm asking, I'm not asking for a universal mask mandate. What I'm asking for is a uh, standard uh, mandate, uh, a consistent mandate, something that is either one way or the other. That's what people want. They're tired of this piecemeal, uh, we're on the mask, we're off the mask, I'm vaccinated, I'm not, mas I'm not vaccinated. I think people are sick and tired of it and they're distrustful of government. They don't trust government because government says do this, but you gotta follow the science. And what we're saying is, I'm okay with this. We'll follow the science, but be consistent. I can go to Rich uh, Highmark Stadium and not wear a face mask, but then later in the day, I go to the DMV and I have to have a face mask. That's not consistent. There was, there was confusion. There was confusion because of the late notice. We need to communicate more. Uh, I am always available, and uh, there was no communication, and this is not the first time that's happened. As I said, I drafted a letter on June 26, asking for the data, asking for the science. We all knew, the, and we all thought that maybe there'd be a possibility of uh, some type of variant coming back. We wanted to be prepared. We want to work as a team. There is no politics uh, when you're fighting public health. We should be working together as a team. Uh, I'm not doing the blame game. What I am doing is, I'm trying to manage an operation, and when you do that, and you don't have clear guidance, and it's only piecemeal guidance, it's only a half measure, uh, people can come to the DMV, put a mask on, and then they can run over to Wegmans, and they don't have to have a mask on. That's not consistent. Now, the county executive is recommending that all public-facing businesses do require customers to wear a mask, just as many county buildings are public-facing buildings. Your response to, in addition to that, cases going up in Erie County. Well, he should know the answer to that because he has a health commissioner and if he's following the science and the science is saying that it is so deadly or it is so risky that we need to wear a mask in county owned facilities, then I think he should look at that and say, how is that impacting us outside of those county facilities? And that's the whole point that I'm talking about is where is the consistency and standardization in the policy? And that's why people don't trust government. That's why they're frustrated because the county executive implements a policy that impacts them, doesn't even talk to a countywide elected official who's supposed to manage this policy, and then uh, we're faced with telling our customers, please come in and renew local when they can, re they can uh, renew online. They can go online and do the same transaction without coming into the DMV uh, and not have to wear a face mask. You know, we're supposed to be working together as a team. Uh, we're not supposed to be working against each other. And many people are frustrated, they're confused, because this is a, a, a policy that he has instituted that's gonna cause a lot of consternation at the clerk's office. And um, we're trying to be proactive on this, but the policy is the policy. I wasn't asked my input uh, whatsoever on what I felt as though was the best way to enact this for the county clerk's office. Nikki, you even said it yourself, there's a distrust in government. And if, say, Mark were to implement a countywide mask mandate, we saw the numbers before that there wasn't significant spread in places like restaurants and right. nursing homes. So to that point, 
is, isn't Mark saying in his lane by saying it's just county run buildings for now? You know what? You can't stay in your lane. COVID-19 doesn't stay in its lane. So I wish COVID-19 was able to do that, but it's with us everywhere, right? It just doesn't stop at the county wide buildings. He's the county executive, I'm the county clerk. All I can talk about is the county clerk's office, but we were the first office to institute sneeze shields. Uh, we have all of the correct equipment, face masks. We'll follow the guidelines. We'll work with you to keep people safe. I think we're all a team on this. My point in this whole thing is it's sort of hypocritical when you bend down and you kneel down to the business establishment and you say, please, 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 no, you either are the leader and you say, yes, there is a policy and then to keep everyone safe, this is what we're going to have to do or no, there is no policy. So for me, I would rather as the county clerk operate uh, prior to the executive order like we were on the honor system. If you're vaccinated, you do not need a uh, mask. And if you're not vaccinated, you have a mask. We've done that uh, pretty uh, coherently at all of our facilities. People have complied, uh, but this really puts us in a tough situation. It puts me in the middle. It's a catch 22 because we are asking people to come in and support the county and to renew local. And many people can go online. And I'll, I'll leave you with this. We know based on the data from our office that normally uh, people that go online we get that uh, sharing uh, from the state of New York. We normally get that in August. Well, you know what we got it this year, Mike? We got it in May. That means more money is going to Albany and less money is coming to the county. You know what that means? That means less roads are getting paid. That means less money for social services. That means less uh, money to keep your taxes low. The county clerk's office is the most important fiscal office in Erie County. And I will repeat that. The county clerk's office is the most important fiscal office in Erie County. We're right now, halfway through the year, we generated $6 billion in real estate. You know where that goes? That goes to the NFTA. That goes to the state of New York. I mean, a lot of people depend upon the office, but when you don't have uh, respect of that office and a policy that we can work together, it causes problems. So once again, that's why I'm here today. Listen, make a decision one way or the other, but you know, you can't just keep on half, I don't want to say the word, but half, me it's a half measure, but it's also half something else too. Follow the science, follow the data, start communicating with other countywide officials, follow the science, follow the data. I think if you tell people the truth, and you're respectful, uh, it's great. I think if you're like Mike Baggerman and you know he looks and he can go on the Buffalo News website and you see 15,000 people out at a county owned facility and none of them are wearing masks, it, it, it breeds distrust. And that's what people want. All they want is the facts. They don't want a top down approach. Tell me what I need to do. Tell me how I could be safe and we'll be fine. Thank you, what about a vaccine mandate? That's something that's been quoted. I don't, you know what, we're so busy trying to just, you know, run things. I'm vaccinated and I know everybody has an opportunity uh, to get a vaccination and they can choose uh, a vaccination. Uh, that's, you know, that's a personal choice for everyone. You know, that's, that's the whole thing that we're talking about. There's no uh, clarity. There's no, uh, uh, there's no thinking through how this is gonna impact the public. It's always a top-down measure. And I think people are tired of just getting these top-down uh, edicts from uh, the county executive. It's time to uh, start communicating and working with the public. So one way or the other, are, are you telling me right now that there's no COVID around us? I don't know, right? We don't know that. But if you go in the county building, it's gonna be in there, so you gotta wear a mask. So. Do you think that the county executive is just making it to county buildings right now because he doesn't want to make a mandate on the private sector? I don't know because I've been asking for the data and I've been asking for the science and they haven't given it to me. I just think, you know, the CDC says one thing 
and it says right now we've got this variant and it's so dangerous, it's so deadly, we need to require masking, not only for people who aren't vaccinated, but people who are vaccinated. I just think we need more explanation on that, why? And if it is so important, then why isn't it an across the board uh, you know, mandate? I, I can't answer that question. I think these are questions you're gonna to have to ask the administration. Why uh, the uh, county government and why not uh, the private sector. I don't know the answers to that. I'm not the county executive. He's the county executive. He issued that executive law. You, you need to ask him. Anything else? Thank you so much. Thanks for coming out.